Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we are joined here by the Roar Within, YouTuber and INFJ. He has agreed to do a special interview with me on today's channel, and I will be doing a collaboration with him on his channel. Okay, so thank you first of all for Eric having me on your channel, really appreciate it. Uh, we're doing a collaboration. I have a channel myself called The Raw Within. You can see that below. My name's Stefan, by the way. And uh, I'm an INFJ Enneagram Type 4 with a 5 wing, if that means something to you guys. Very introverted. So I, I found Eric's channel. I said, I like that you're talking about the Myers-Briggs test and having this insight. So do you want to do a collaboration? So he'll be answering some questions on my channel. I've got some to answer now. Yeah, so let's get right into it. I personally relate a lot to being... A reflective kind of INFJ. I have always been very introspective, I've always been a philosopher, I've always been a person seeking answers and wisdom and to learn and to see deeper into the world. What do you relate the most to about being an INFJ? So like yourself, I am very deep thinking as well, always questioning like the meaning and I always was before I found this label of INFJ. When I did find the label of being an INFJ, it, it rang true for me probably mostly because I I always felt so dissatisfied with reality and I was always very idealistic about how the world should be. And that's caused a lot of pain, unfortunately, because there is so many problems, obviously, with inequality, suffering, abuse, that could just be stopped if people could have the same mind, want a peaceful world. And unfortunately, some people don't. For example, Donald Trump, he's not someone who wants a peaceful world. He wants to create conflict and controversy and probably war. So it's going to be an interesting few years and I think that we're heading somewhere pretty dark. Uh, that's the thing I, I relate to the strongest. That's a perfect answer. And I want to say I, I struggle a lot personally with indecisiveness. I can see everyone's perspective, I can understand how everyone is thinking and that sometimes makes it difficult for me to assert myself and to stand up for what I personally believe or see to be true. So what do you struggle the most with about being an INFJ? So I agree, I'm very indecisive myself. I am very good at internalizing different ideas, but I lack the energy to physically go and make it happen. So that's a big problem, but I think the biggest problem for me is this constant seeking for answers, never really being present in the moment, being like, am I enjoying this? Do I belong in this scenario? Is this video game a waste of time? And I was never really like that as a kid because I didn't have the same awareness of, you know, what is going on in the world. And it was much easier to be content and peaceful just having fun. Now I feel that I'm always, you know, picking up books on anxiety or the meaning of life or INFJ, Enneagram. And it's a constant seeking, trying to find happiness. That's the thing that I think causes me a lot of struggle. And uh, because I do feel so different, being the rarest personality type, particularly for men, I often feel like I can't be bothered to, to talk to anyone because it's constantly a case of me trying to explain myself and the way that I think and people trying to then give their ideas and be like, oh, just don't worry, just chill out. And if I, if I could just chill out, then I would. But unfortunately, yeah, it's, a, it's very isolating at times being an INFJ, at least in my experience. So the first thing I thought when I saw your video was you seem so peaceful and so self-aware and so wise in many ways. Do you relate to being that or is there something else going on beneath the surface? I don't know if I'm peaceful given what I've said already. I, I don't think I'm very peaceful. A lot of people might look at me in life and think, you know, because I'm an introvert, I'm, I'm quite sort of quiet from the outside, stoic inside my mind is often going 100 miles an hour and I'm processing different information I'm a highly sensitive person so stimulus really gets filtered through me strongly and I'm yeah very aware of what's going on at all times and a lot more wise than people might think looking at me because I might I might seem a bit quiet like I've got nothing to say but completely the opposite but I, yeah I am quite wise in the way that I feel switched on, like being vegan is a really bold step for some people, but for, for someone who can see that it's unnecessary, it's like, this is just the minimum, like everyone should do this. Uh, likewise, becoming like a minimalist to an extent, not to the extent where, you know, I've got stuff I can look around at now. Some people don't own anything. They go really extreme with it, but I do see a lot of the, the fakeness in the world, advertisements, shops, all this stuff, like 
you can you can waste a lot of money seeking for happiness that will never be fulfilled because happiness does come from a state of mind what you think about those things and if if a car doesn't mean much to you then don't buy an expensive car because it's not really going to impact your life much but i guess i had to become wise because i felt weird i felt different i questioned things a lot which is what led me to this path of sort of self discovery infj etc so I think most INFJs would relate to being very, very much in their own heads and getting a lot of wisdom early on in life. But I feel often the main issue for an INFJ is translating that insight into real life decision making and action. Do you notice that in yourself? Massively. And I've noticed this as well is a big problem for INFJs. I have had a lot of jobs that are just, you know, working in an office, working in a shop and it's difficult for a couple of reasons. One, as I've explained, being INFJ, think very deeply. So for anything that's a shallow job anyone could do, I get so bored and depressed and I come home and like, I got no fucking reason to live. Like, what's the point of my life? I can get really quite dark in my mind after that. The second problem is because I'm highly sensitive and introverted, being around people in an open plan office or working in retail which you know no one really wants to do but that's jobs I've had to do in the past for money it's very difficult to kind of settle um, it's very hard for me to be content in those jobs and I've kind of learned that I never would be but it creates so much pressure and I get so burnt out by all of this that after I come home from a job I'm not enjoying I just can't be bothered to do anything because I've got no energy left and so nothing really gets resolved. I never really take the steps that would be needed. I get into a point where I'm like, oh, there's 7 billion people in the world. It's stupid for me to think I've got a purpose in my life. Uh, no one wants to listen to my music so I won't even bother. Yeah, that's that's definitely my biggest cause of uh, my, my depression and my unsettledness and inability to rest is just yeah, just, <laughs> I have these massive ambitions, but I lack the energy and conviction to just commit to something. And I don't know how to get past that at the moment. So I've noticed many projects like Personality Hacker, for example, encourage INFJs to explore their feeling side more, where other projects argue that an INFJ should rather seek to develop their thinking side. What do you personally think about feeling and thinking? How do you personally use feeling and thinking in your life? So yeah, the F is like an extroverted thing, obviously, in the INFJ. So it depends. If I'm in a good mood, then, you know, I might write a song or I'll act really hyper and energetic. And I say act, that's how I'm feeling in that moment. So my girlfriend sees these two sides of me. She sees when I'm a bit flat. I feel quite flat today, as you might have noticed. But sometimes I'm fucking manic. It's kind of like bipolar, but, but not. And yeah, I'll have loads of energy. I could film like 10 YouTube videos in a day. They'd all be super fun to watch. And it's quite frustrating to go between those two. Like I love being the happy, crazy me, but then I feel like super boring and flat and I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to hide in a cave. Um, but yeah, when I'm feeling, I get angry because like if I'm feeling flat and I feel like I can't talk to anyone, especially if it's like at work and I, I don't want to moan about work and hating the job because you can't really do that. So I sort of feel this burden of anger within me the whole day. And then I come home and I don't do it very often actually, but I bought a baseball bat for the sole purpose that it's it's more fun to hit something with a baseball bat, meaning like a cushion, than to just punch it, just to give it a proper swing. I do like badminton, that helps to get you know a bit of stress out, just smashing it. Uh, what else do I do? I can't, I can't think of anything else actually, but YouTube videos, I do a lot of YouTube videos when I'm feeling more in the mood for it. Sometimes I do videos when I'm, you know, I just feel I want to talk. But a lot of the time my videos come from a place of, yeah, I'm feeling quite good. I want to share this moment with a camera. I really do see a lot of similarities between you and myself in that regard. Have you met anyone uh, in real life or on the internet that is similar to you as an INFJ? Someone that you can recognize yourself in and relate to? I don't think so. I don't think I've met anyone like me in the past because I'm such an individual. But really, I I know like musicians and stuff and I did a music course and you sort of see some similarities, but I've always lacked that one really close person who like gets me apart from my girlfriend. So I guess my girlfriend counts. 
but she's still different different to me she's not very musical she has never sang in front of me in three years i say girlfriend as well she's my fiance i asked her to marry me the other day but yeah that answers that question wow that's awesome congratulations i have to say you seem so human on camera and uh, that's another thing i love about your channel you seem very open about yourself and your struggles and your issues as well as the good things happening in your life very well rounded in that way and that's also why i encourage all of you to go to roar within's channel and to check out his content and i have one final question as i round off this video and that is do you have any key advice that you would like to give to other INFJs out there? I don't know if I would because I don't want to claim that like I'm, I've got it all figured out because I really don't. But I suppose anyone who's early in this is really to sort of trust your gut. I think that as an INFJ, uh, the N, we have such strong intuition. You really should trust that. And there's been times in the past where I should have trusted it and I knew it was true, but I, I chose it would be more comfortable to avoid what was uh, true about a situation in the time, but you know, it could have saved a lot of suffering. And uh, you really do that. The more you stay in a situation or an environment that's not working for you, the more destructive it will be when it finally ends. But unfortunately, the intuition is good in one sense, but it also leaves me trying to figure out exactly what to do instead. Uh, for example, with a job, I'm like, oh, I hate this job, I hate it. But then I'm like, come on, intuition, what should I do instead? I don't know. Oh, that's helpful. Thanks very much. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, thank you very much for having me on your channel today. And I will see you whenever I do. Goodbye. Okay, so that's that. Thank you once again for joining. And for all of you who are interested in hearing about more, I recommend all of you to check out the Roar Within's YouTube channel, where we will be uploading part two shortly.